Hi everyone, so today we are going to understand the different parts of a manual release oscillator. So, we have the different parts of manual release oscillator. The first part is going to be the self expanding valve. So, here I have a manual release oscillator, and as you can see, I have compressed this release oscillator. Right? So, the one that I have is the largest release oscillator. Uh, so, let's have a look at the parts. So, the first part that we shall look at is the the self expanding valve. Okay? So this is the bag which stays, which is made up of silicone, alright. As you can see, it is transparent, okay. It's got circular ribs around it to give it strength, alright. It's got thick walls, okay. This bag stays expanded in the resting state, okay. And it also stays expand. It expands during expiration. Now this bag has got two ends. There's one end which is going to be the patient end and the other end is going to be for the respirable gas inlet. Alright. You can manually ventilate the patient alright, by one hand technique or by using the two hand technique. Alright. So the amount of tidal volume that will go to the patient will be determined by whether you're using the one hand technique or the two hand technique. Okay. So if you want to improve the tidal volume, you can use the two hand technique. The other method is also that when you hold this, okay, when you ventilate in the patient, you can also ventilate by holding it against your body and you can ventilate the patient, okay? Or you can hold it against a surface, compress and ventilate the patient, okay? Now, the respiratory rate that you can provide, like the mechanical ventilation that you can provide by this bag will be determined by how fast can this bag expand, okay? So, if the bag takes more time to expand, that means the respiratory rate that you can provide will be quite less. But if the bag expands really quickly, that means you can give a higher respiratory rate. Okay. So now let's understand there are two ends. So one is the patient end and the other one is the respirable gas inlet end. Okay. So first we shall understand the patient end and the parts of the patient end. So you can see that this is a T-shaped housing. Or it, it is transparent. Okay, so the purpose of having everything transparent is that you can see if there are any secretions inside, you can see if there's any blood collection inside. Okay, so this is a T shaped housing which is transparent. Now we shall see the individual parts of this. Okay, so the first thing is that this is 7 ml in capacity. Okay, this T shaped housing has got 7 ml capacity. As you can see, this is the patient inspired, this is a patient coat. Okay. So this is the patient hood and now we shall open it. This has got two valves, alright. There is a fish mark valve and there is a disc membrane, alright. So let's see the fish mark valve. So we can open this, alright. So as you can see, I'm opening the patient in and here is the fish mark valve, alright. So as you can see that this is the fish mark valve, okay. And I'll also show you the disc membrane. So this is the disc membrane, alright. So this is the disc membrane, which is like a flap valve, okay. So this is the disc membrane, and this is the way there are the two, the fish mark one and the disc membrane. So this is the way it is, alright. And if you can have a closer look, alright. So this, what this is known as the inspiratory port, alright. And there's an expiratory port because these valves are going to allow only one way flow of gas. Okay? So I'll show you the expiratory port. So the disc membrane is sitting on the expiratory port. So if you can see here, this is the expiratory port. So if I lift the disc membrane, you'll be able to see that there is an expiratory port over here which is sealed by the disc membrane. Alright. So let's and this is the T-shaped housing. Okay. So I will close this. Alright. So now, how does this work? Okay. So during inspiration, what's going to happen is that the fish mouth one will open. So during inspiration, you can see that the fish mouth one is open. So what happens is the fish mouth one opens during inspiration, and at the same time, the disc membrane is going to close against the expiratory port. And prevent any leakage of gases from it. Alright, so what's happening at the time of inspiration? The fish mark valve is opening, alright, and the disc membrane will sit against the expiratory port and prevent any leakage of gases. So, therefore, there's going to be only one way flow of gas during inspiration. That is, the one way flow of gases going to occur from the bag to the patient, alright. 
Now at the time of expiration, what else is happening? There is another bulb over here. Alright, so we shall understand that valve also later. So I just quickly tell you that there is a valve over here, and that valve will also be closed during inspiration. So during inspiration, there is only one way flow of gas that is towards the patient. There is no flow of gas in the retrograde manner. Alright, from this end, okay, which is a respiratory gas area, there is no retrograde flow of gas happening over here. Okay, so now what is happening during Expiration. So during expiration, this is the common flow, right? So through this, the gas will enter, all right? The gas will enter in, but the fish mouth valve will remain closed. All right? The fish mouth valve will remain closed, and now the gas will move through the expiratory port over here, all right? It will cause the lifting of the disc membrane, all right? And it will cause the escape of the gases outside into the atmosphere. So what's going to happen is that this disc membrane is going to get lifted. Okay, because of the movement of the gas through the expiratory port out to the atmosphere. So, what is happening during expiration? That fish mouth valve is closed, this membrane lifts over the lifts up, and there is escape of gas to the expiratory port. Now, what you need to understand is that during expiration, none of the gas is entering into the bag. It's all getting vented out to the atmosphere through the expiratory port. Okay, now. One more point is that there is a swivel mechanism over here. As you can see that there is a free movement happening. So this is called as the swivel mechanism. Now this is the patient end, right? So this patient end is has got a 20 millimeters, okay, 20 millimeter diameter externally, and it's got an internal diameter of 15 millimeters. So it's going to connect with any standard endotracheal tube or any adult or pediatric masks. Okay. So there's a 20 mm external diameter and 15 mm internal diameter. So now let's understand the different types of valves that will be there in a manual resuscitator. So there are these are unidirectional valves that is they allow flow of gas only in one direction. Okay, so they can be the spring disc valve or with the spring loaded valve. It can be the flap valve, fish mouth valve, diaphragm valve, mushroom valve, and the fish mouth flap valve. Alright. Okay? So since we are talking about these unidirectional valves, we have already understood the functioning of the fish mouth valve. And the disc membrane, which is the type of a flap valve. Okay. Uh, now the spring disc valve. Okay. So let's understand that. So there is another component which can be there in a manual resuscitator, which is a pressure limiting device, also known as a pop up valve. Alright. So now in this resuscitator, which is a larger valve resuscitator, we do not have a pop up valve in this. Alright. You can see that there is no pop up valve over here. Whereas there are certain resuscitators which have got a spring loaded disc over here, a pop of valve is located right over here at this housing. Alright, so it is a spring loaded disc and that spring can be rotated, tension can be built up in the spring, and at, at, at least a certain at a certain pressure, what will happen is that this valve will pop off and cause the escape of extra gas to the atmosphere. So that is, it's going to prevent ventilation of the patient with very high inspiratory pressures, okay. So it will protect the patient from baby trauma and it will also protect the patient from any gas insufflation into the stomach during bad mass ventilation, alright. So this pop-off valve, the maximum pressure that can be set is going to be 60 centimeters of water in an adult and 45 centimeters of water in a pediatric patient, okay. So there are some valves where in a set pressure, a certain one pressure is set and fixed, alright. There is a certain valves where in the pressure can be determined by us and we can set the individual pressure that we want to set, okay. Now, this mechanism, this pop of valve can be overrided, okay. It can be overrided. So, it just imagine if there's a spring loaded pop of valve here, you can press it with your thumb, okay, or you can put a tape over it. And you can override this pop of valve. Now, since we are talking about the valves, alright, so now we understand the back inlet valve, alright. So, this is this end is the back inlet end, alright. There's the back inlet valve over here. This is also called as a respirable gas inlet, okay. So, let's open this and see what's inside. So as you can see, I have opened this thing. Okay, so this part we shall discuss it later. Okay, this is a part of the reservoir bag. Okay, so this we shall discuss later. So here you can see that this is the bag inlet valve. Okay, so you can see that there is a valve over here, and it's a flap kind of valve. Okay, there is a flap over here. Okay, 
okay it's very similar to the flap which was there in the expiratory port all right so it's a very similar kind of this kind of flap okay so this is the back inlet valve this valve will allow only one way movement of the gas that is from the atmosphere or from the reservoir back into this into the manual resuscitator all right it's going to allow only one way flow of gas that is inside the manual resuscitator the opposite flow of gas that is outside from here will not happen okay so how is this valve going to open and allow the entrainment of room air or oxygen into this bag all right so during inspiration now let's see during inspiration this valve over here is going to close and it's going to prevent any escape of gas but now what has happened now when the bag is going to be released a negative pressure is generated within the bag this negative pressure is going to be sucking in of air okay the ambient room air or the oxygen from the reservoir bag through this valve into the bag all right so it's this valve is going to open when a negative pressure is going to be developed within the bag all right now we shall understand the next bit so now we are going to understand the next bit so i'm going to close this all right over here okay so now we shall see the respirable gas inlet okay so this is the respirable gas inlet all right there is you can see there is one port over here. there's a small bore nipple all right over here and there is a wide bore port okay so this white bore port is attached to the reservoir bag. All right. This white bore port. There are two options. Either you leave it open to the atmosphere, or you attach it to the reservoir bag. All right. And there's a small, smaller bore nipple over here, which is attached to the oxygen tubing. Okay. So what happens is that oxygen will enter through this port, and it will enter into this bag as well. Okay. It will enter this bag. Now what's going to happen is all the excess oxygen is going to move into this reservoir bag. Alright. And it's going to inflate. This reservoir bag will inflate. Okay. So now what's going to happen is that we can provide higher FiO2 to the patient by just attaching this reservoir bag. Alright. Because if you do not attach this reservoir bag, lower FiO2 is not available. So if you want to deliver higher FiO2, even if you want to deliver 100% FiO2, it's quite possible if you attach this reservoir bag. Alright. Now, when is this going to be possible? If the size of this reservoir bag is going to be more than the size of this bag, okay, the self inflating bag. Alright. So if the volume of this bag is more than the volume of this bag, then it's going to give you 100% of FiO2. But if the volume of this bag, that is, this reservoir bag is lesser than the manual resuscitator bag, then we cannot achieve 100% FIOD. Alright, so now you can see that there are two bulbs over here. Alright, um, so there is one bulb at the top over here, and there's one bulb at the bottom over here. Okay, so as you can see, there are two bulbs over here. So, what is the role of these two bulbs? Alright, so what's going to happen is that during ventilation, okay, now as you can see that this bag is deflated okay there is no oxygen in this reservoir okay so what's going to happen will this cause what's going to happen this bag is still expanding what's happening this bag is still expanding why is this bag still expanding from where is it getting the air all right this bag is empty so this air that is the room air is able to enter into the self-expanding bag through this valve, all right, through this flap valve, this one way flap valve is going to allow the movement of gas from the atmosphere into the bag. So there is never going to be a moment when this bag is not going to expand, all right. It will receive air and it will expand although the reservoir bag is empty. So that is the function of one of the valves, all right. Then there is another valve. Okay, so there is a second flap valve. What is the role of that flap valve? So what's going to happen? Suppose this bag is completely full of oxygen, all right? It's completely tense and tight, okay? And you're ventilating the patient, okay? So what's going to happen? To prevent this high pressure, okay, to prevent this high pressure from generating within the reservoir bag, there's an additional valve which will cause the bending out of excess oxygen to the atmosphere, all right? So the role of the second valve is that it will prevent overinflation of this bag, it will prevent excessive pressures from rising in this reservoir bag by bending out excess oxygen into the atmosphere. 
So we understand the role of these two bulbs. Okay. okay, so what is the size of the manual resuscitator bag that should be used? Alright, so for an adult who is more than 30 kgs in weight, the adult type of bag, the size of the bag is 1600 ml. Okay, the volume is 1600 ml, and the maximum tidal volume that you can deliver is 1000 ml. Alright, the pediatric patients, which is 7 kgs to 30 kgs in weight, the bag size is 500 ml, and maximum tidal volume that you can give to the patient is 350 ml. And for the neonates, which is less than 7 kg, the maximum tidal volume that you can use is around 200 kg. Now, how much should be the oxygen flow when you are using the manual resuscitator? That is when you attach the O2. So, the O2 should be attached and it should be set at the rate of 10 to 15 liters per minute and not more. Alright? For the pediatric patient, you should use lower oxygen flows. Okay? So now that this is an adult bag, so the size of this bag, the volume of this bag is 1600 ml and this is the oxygen reservoir and as you can see the volume of this oxygen reservoir is 2600 ml it is 1000 ml much more than this bag and hence we can all provide 100% profile using this larval resuscitator then there are certain components which are not compulsory all right so these are going to be the peak valve okay so a valve can be attached for giving peak okay the pop of valve as you saw in this larval resuscitator there was no pop of valve there was no peak valve since these two are optional components all right the reservoir bag, as you saw in the larval resuscitator, the one that I have, there is a reservoir, you know, um, reservoir bag in it. So that reservoir bag is also an optional component. The scavenging mechanism also is an optional component which can be there. CO2 detection and the pressure monitoring port. So these are some of the optional components that can be there in your manual resuscitator. Uh, now we shall see how to check the manual resuscitator. Okay, so let's understand how do you check this manual resuscitator that is this larval valve resuscitator that I have alright so first you look and inspect it for any cracks any defect in the bag any leaks alright then you see any externally any defects alright so that's the first step that you need to do the second is that you occlude the patient port alright so you occlude the patient port and you apply pressure and try to ventilate okay so when you when you try to do this see I'm not able to ventilate not able to compress this bag all right so this means that this end is patent all right it means that okay there is no leakage of gases in the retrograde fashion okay so when i do this it's really tight high pressures are required and there is no escape of gas in the retrograde manner okay so this is the first test that is you open the patient port and you apply pressure okay the second is that you compress the bag completely Okay, you compress the back completely. Okay, now you occlude the patient end. Ideally, what should happen? This back should inflate. This bag has inflated by itself. All right. So what has happened now? This proves that the intake valve over here, the back refill valve, the intake valve is patent and it is able to entrain gas into this bag and expand this bag. So this is the second test. Now you can consider this to be a test lung. All right. So this is a reservoir bag from the closed circuit. I have attached it and now let's just pretend that this is a test lung. Okay. So now what should happen? Okay, this is the next test. So you just as if you're ventilating the patient, right? What am I doing? It's like as if I'm ventilating the patient. This bag should deflate smoothly. Is that happening? Yes. This bag is deflating very smoothly. Alright. The smooth deflation of bag. Me and the smooth inflation of this bag means that both the inspiratory port and the expiratory port are patent and working fine. Okay. Now the next test is that we have no O2 flow over here. Okay. No O2 flow is there. This reservoir bag is going to deflate completely. So I'm going to give multiple breaths. Okay. I'm giving multiple breaths to the patient. Okay. Multiple take breaths. Okay, this has completely deflated, but yet I'm able to ventilate the patient over here. All right, so that means the entrainment of gas from the air, from atmosphere into the back to the patient is happening and it's working absolutely fine. Okay, uh, the next test is going to be that now I have inflated. All right, I have inflated the bag. So suppose this is a test one and I have inflated it. Okay, now when I post the pressing. You can see that the disc membrane is getting lifted and gas is escaping through the expiratory port. Let's do it again. I am ventilating, ventilating, ventilating. This lung is inflated, pressure is given, and the disc membrane is lifting 
and gas is escaping from the ex expiratory port. So this means that the expiratory port is also heating and working. All right. The next test is going to be to check the oxygen nipple. All right. This to check this thing. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deflate this bag completely. All right. I have deflated the bag completely, and I'm going to occlude this thing. Okay. This thing I'm going to occlude it. Now is it going to fill? Yes. It has filled. The oxygen O2 port is heating. Okay. There are two more uh, tests which are there. Which is one is for the O2 port and the other one is for the um, you know, for this respirable gas inlet, this common inlet, all right. So, what you do is you deflate the bag completely and then you occlude individual one of these, all right, turn by turn. So, if the bag inflates completely and properly, that means both of these ports individually are now working fine. Okay, so how are you going to sterilize and disinfect the parts of this uh, manual resuscitator? All right, so the first step is that you open up all the parts, all right, you wash it with lukewarm water with some detergent, rinse it thoroughly, and then put it out to dry, all right. So, that is decontamination. The next step comes with sterilization. Okay, so in sterilization, you can steam or create the parts. Okay, and that is for 15 minutes at 135 degrees centigrade. All right, then you can also do ethylene oxide treatment for 180 minutes. Then there is high level of disinfection. All right, then you just soak all the parts in Sandex 2% for 60 minutes. Or you can also soak it in sodium hypochlorite 0.5% for 20 minutes. So after the soakage, you have to you know, rinse it with sterile water and put it out to dry. All right. Uh, there are some parts which cannot be autoclave, which is left, such as the reservoir bag. So one of the problems that can occur with the manual resuscitator. All right. You can have high peak airway pressures. They can be bailed from up to the patient. All right. Inadvertent hyperventilation might occur. Inadvertent hyperventilation of the patient might occur. All right. Rebreathing can occur in the patient. All right. Lower FiO2 may, be de may get delivered to the patient okay, if in the O2 flow is insufficient. All right. So here today we understand understood the lardal valve resuscitator, which is the most common type of used manual resuscitator. All right. There are other resuscitators such as the Ambu resuscitator, the Air Viva resuscitator, but the most commonly used is the lardal valve resuscitator. I hope you found this uh, short video. You know this session helpful and I shall try to continue make continue making you know more such informative videos. Thank you.